How to place a stop loss correctly. In this video, you will learn how to place a stop loss correctly using support and resistance, trend lines and channels, and moving averages. We will also teach you what time based stop losses are, as well as introducing you to trailing stops. Stop losses are an essential tool for protecting your trading account. Technical analysis is used extensively for accurate stop loss placement, and we'll explore a number of ways in which technical analysis can be used to place a stop loss. One of the most common methods is the use of support and resistance. Support and resistance can show where buying and selling has previously taken place, and can therefore show where buying and selling is likely to take place in the future. In other words, by looking at resistance, you can see the highest price that an asset reaches before traders come in and start selling the asset. And the lowest price that an asset reaches before the traders come in and start buying. So if, for instance, you want to enter a short position at a resistance level, you can then place the stop loss at the other side of this resistance level. You should place your stop loss somewhat above the resistance level because the price may pierce through a bit before reversing. Or you may want to enter a long position at a support level, meaning you can then place the stop loss at the other side of this support level. You should place your stop loss somewhat below the support level because price may pierce through a bit before reversing. Another common method in placing a stop loss is to use trend lines or channel patterns. Once a channel has been established, the price is likely to stay within the channel, and you can use the upper or lower boundaries to place your stop loss. Using the example of going long, once you enter at the lower boundary of a channel, you can place the stop loss below the lower trend line. Again, you might not place the stop loss directly at the trend line boundary, as the price might pierce through a bit before reversing. There are times when a moving average acts as support and resistance, much in the same way that horizontal support and resistance levels do. Moving averages are sometimes used for entry into the market, and so if you go either long or short after the price has encountered a moving average as either support or resistance, the stop loss can be placed on the other side. A non-technical tool that can be used is a time-based stop loss. The concept of this depends on how long you are willing to hold a trade. After a certain time, which is determined before the trade is opened, the position is closed. You may wish to use a time-based stop loss to determine if you should exit the market, because if the price has not moved significantly enough in a given period of time, then you may want to consider closing down your trade and using your capital to find more profitable trades elsewhere. It is important to note that money management rules still apply, and that time-based stop losses are to be used in conjunction with a predetermined stop loss and profit target. Trailing stops are stop losses that move in your favour when a trade goes into profit. This means that when you are long and the price goes up a certain number of pips, you move your stop up. When you are short, you move your stop down when the price moves down a certain number of pips. The advantage of a trailing stop is that the risk on the trade starts being reduced immediately, and once the trade goes into profit, the trailing stop will then lock in any profit. So far you have learned that support and resistance, trend lines, channels and moving averages are common ways to place stop losses because of their accuracy. Time-based stop losses depend on how long the trader will hold the position. You may want to use a time-based stop loss 
in order to find more profitable trades elsewhere if the price is not moving significantly in any direction. Furthermore, you learn that trailing stop losses can be used to reduce risk and lock in profits as the price goes in favour of the trade.